Why is this prayer just so intense? Every single day from the moment we reach the age until our last breath, Prayer is compulsory on each and every one of us, not just once, not just twice, but five times per day. That's intense. That's a lot. Why? What is this about? There's a beautiful example that we can use. Think about any military in the entire world, bar none. Every single one of those soldiers in that military, when they're commanded to do A, they do it without any hesitation. When they're commanded to do B, they do it. When they're commanded to do C, Anything that they're commanded to do, any military in the world, their soldiers will simply obey. But that's just not the same if you to go to any office environment. There's something specific. There's something that they do in the military with those soldiers that gets them into this mindset. They're given life and death commands. They follow without any questions. This strict following of commands internalizes their perception, their notion of the greatness of their commander, of their leader. They have this absolute respect for their authority. In any trick of moment, they will simply follow their commander. No ifs, no buts. And prayer is similar. It gets us to this point where we're able to simply say, you know what, I consent to Allah. In any situation that I face, I consent to God. And I eventually start to proclaim God's greatness in every situation that I face. The military is disciplined, rigorous training. In the same way, prayer is disciplined. It's rigorous training. The outcome of the military and the soldiers is that they see the greatness of their commander and they obey regardless. The outcome of my prayer in such a disciplined fashion is that I recognize the greatness of my creator and I obey his command in any situation that I face, no matter how hard it is, whether it's life or death, no issues. God is greater. And I bow and I prostrate accordingly towards this greatness that I'm beginning to recognize. No matter what I'm doing, no matter the situation I'm feeling, Allahu Akbar. And note, in the military, the commander doesn't go around to his soldier saying, Hey, I just bought you this, I just bought you this, I just bought you that. Now will you obey me? Because what would happen in that situation? That soldier, when they see the enemy attacking... They'll say to their commander, hey, you want me to travel south? I'll travel south only if you buy me something more. Only if you buy me out. Note the parallel here with us and our our relationship with our creator. When we face a tough situation, when someone is ill, when we're on our deathbed, when we're losing our job, when we're losing money, when whatever is happening that we believe to be severe, how many of us turn towards our creator and say, hey, Allah, if you get me out of this situation, then... I will come towards you. Look how twisted we've got it. Instead, no matter what, this commander, this creator is so great that I have full trust. He never needs to buy me out. I'm completely bought into him. I already recognize everything that he has done for me. God is always greater. His greatness and his grandeur comes first. And then comes his love, his mercy and forgiveness. And note, In our du'as, and if you take, for example, the du'a in Shah Ramadan, we start with Ya Ali, Ya Azim. We start with the one who is sublime, the one who is great. And then we call Ya Ghafoor, Ya Rahim, the one who is forgiving, the one who is all merciful. So don't get it the wrong way around. We start with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's greatness. And then comes his love and his mercy. Don't wait for his love and mercy. Embrace his greatness and then experience his love and his mercy.